Hey there. For the past few months, really past couple of years, I've been working on a design course called Radical Design. I've been teaching people how to design, as the name of the course would suggest. And I've had the same setup. I found how I wanted to, you know, use which cameras in which position. And I was using uh, a Opal C1 and it was mounted right here above my uh, monitor. And that's the angle that I use for, hey, I'm sitting at a computer and it's pointing at me like this. It was working great, the quality was pretty good. I didn't have any complaints. I would usually put a green screen behind me and so I just had to be able to knock myself out and, and uh, have it be right there. But uh, the Opal C1 started crashing. It overheats, it has problems. It is not a perfect webcam. And so I started using my iPhone. And the iPhone is a great webcam, but I kept <laughs> forgetting that I put it up here and wandering around the house looking for it because when it's in webcam mode, the pings don't work. Like it suppresses them so you don't ruin a shot. And so that got me down the rabbit hole of what webcam can I just set here and forget it? If you're gonna spend a couple hundred bucks or close to a thousand bucks or more, I wanna get the best bang for your buck. And I think you're probably in the same situation where you're making videos, you're streaming, you're uh, you know, doing screencasts or whatever, and you're looking for a camera that you can just set it and forget it. That's what I'm trying to do here. I just went and bought like everything that was on the market right now that I could get my hands on that was reasonably well reviewed where people were talking about, as well as some kind of crappier ones so we can compare them. I'm a gear guy, I love tech, I love buying <laughs> gear acquisition syndrome. I've got a lot of stuff. So without any further nonsense, this is gonna be just a cut and dry, straightforward, simple comparison of all of the cameras I can get my hands on. <laughs> it's so big. It's like a set-top cable box. All right, it's the MacBook Pro M1. It's the Ultra if it matters. Really don't think it does. Not good, but it's just, uh, you know, needed a baseline to compare everything else to. Really the only good thing about this camera is it's already on your laptop. Although I had to go through some shenanigans to get it to the right height of all the other webcams. So yeah, not really practical. Now for the Logitech C920. It's an older camera, really only included because a lot of people have this webcam and would like to see what it looks like compared to all these other ones. It's not great, it's 1080, which is okay, but just the lighting, the light response, not great. You can see it's pretty, pretty dark. Even with all the lights on, it's not, it's not very light sensitive. It's not a great picture. Now for the Elgato Facecam Pro 4K, which I thought would have been great because Elgato makes amazing stuff. Look at this, look at this lighting. This is natural lighting. Even compared to the Logitech, it's not great. It's terrible. It's also the size of a book, like a set-top cable box. This thing is massive. I did all the firmware updates and it took a lot of manual fiddling to even make it look reasonable, which I didn't show here because I feel like the base out of the box setup should be what I'm showing you. Autofocus was also a little bit soft. The Opal C1 was my main camera for a while, kind of off and on if I'm being perfectly honest, I would swap between this and my iPhone. The picture you'll see when all the lights come on is pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty good, but the autofocus is super spotty. Sometimes it just goes completely out of focus for no reason. And also it overheats, like insanely overheats, burns my fingers. It must be pushing 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And when it overheats, it crashes and you lose all your footage or it freezes and there's no feedback to let you know that it happened. 
All right, the Ozbot Tiny 4K. Not bad. The basic lighting, the natural lighting is reasonable compared to the others. It handles the light well. Uh, it worked great out of the box. Setup was super easy. It has a gimbal and uh, a pivoting base so that it can motion track you and follow you around the room if that's something you're looking for. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. And overall, I give this camera a pretty solid B+. I think it uh, does a really good job. And if you could find a good deal on it, I think it's it could be worth your time and money. However, make sure you take a look at the Insta360 link, which is coming up. The gesture recognition was not great. This should be zooming in on me right now. It's not working. It took three or four or maybe five tries to get it to detect the shape of an L. Here you go, you see it's going, but it doesn't hold and it zooms right back out. So yeah, maybe it's a software problem, could be fixed with an update, but it was a little bit on the, the derpy side, not gonna lie. Come on, let's go, let's zoom. Come on, come on. There it is. Fancy. Here's the Insta360 Link. This is not a 360 degree camera. Insta360 does make a lot of different cameras. And I really like them as a company because they're pushing the software and the feature and the user uh, experience side in directions that other companies like GoPro, one of their competitors, uh, don't. They just, they have some pretty cool takes. I thought this camera was great. The picture clarity was uh, as good as anything else, honestly. And the software was awesome. It has some really cool features and uh, you'll see them in a second. Here's the gesture tracking. Not quite perfect, but better than the Ozbot. About nine times out of 10 it worked. It has a, quite a range of motion and a really fast response time on the tracking. And just, I mean, look at this range. It goes low, it goes high. It's pretty cool if you need that feature, which you might not. It also has a desk view mode where it just pivots down and uh, it lets you see what's on the desk, which is great if you do like unboxing kind of videos and that sort of thing. All right, the iPhone. I have an iPhone 14 Pro. The 15 Pro probably, maybe is a little bit better. I don't have one, sorry. Looks good. Honestly, it's probably the best, clearest picture of all of the cameras, which you might already own and might be the perfect choice for you. I will say it is not the best user experience using your iPhone as a camera. Mounting it can be a little bit awkward depending on what kind of mount you're using. The magnetic mount does work pretty nicely. However, uh, you don't ever get the same angle every time. Uh, it also, just when you leave it up there, you forget that your camera's up there. Or if you need to use your phone while you're filming, you have to take it off the mount, put it back on the mount. And I've just, I really didn't like having my phone tied up that in, in, in that particular way. So for me, um, even though it's good in a backup pinch or something, I choose to not use this and uh, I'm going to spend money on something else that I can just leave in a fixed position all of the time. There's some good features though. Center stage works good. It's not quite as fast and responsive as uh, the Insta360 link, but maybe that's not a bad thing. So I'm gonna stop this comparison video right here. I know I was promising I was gonna do the Sony ZV-1, my Panasonic GH5, and my uh, Sony A7S III. However, after spending hours and hours and hours trying to get them to run as a webcam, I know you can do it. I followed every YouTube tutorial that I could possibly find, and I didn't get it to work on any of them. Uh, I, I was able to get the Luna, or sorry, the, uh, the Lumix GH5, the Panasonic GH5, to work in 720 mode, uh, but it was really annoying because you needed to 
like in order to control the camera, you had to disable the webcam and then like make you controls, then quit the app and then re-enable the re -enable it as a webcam before you could use it as a device. And if the focus was wrong, because the autofocus isn't very good on this camera, you had to quit it again and reopen the control panel. So like, it was just not designed for that. Um, the Sony A7, or sorry, the Sony uh, ZV-1, which is a great little pocket camera. I think they sell for like three or 400 bucks now, or really, because there's like a Mark II um, now, which is like seven, $800, something like that. The problem, the biggest problem with that, aside from not getting the software to run properly as a, as a webcam, and I think I had the wrong cable, I couldn't find the right cable. It's one of those micro USBs from the olden days before USC, a uh, USB-C, and it just, like I couldn't get one that did power and data, and I looked all everywhere and I went to like, just, like I just couldn't find one and I couldn't make it work. Um, you could probably use like a cam link 4K and do it. Um, but the biggest problem and why I decided to just not even bother continuing was this is a battery powered camera. It doesn't run power via USB. So the only way to make it work is to get a, a, a dummy battery, which I use for this camera. I use dummy batteries and they're just like a, a battery on a cable that plugs into the wall and you just put that in. Um, but the problem, let's see if you can see this. The problem is that when the doors open, you can't access the screw thread. So there's no way to mount this thing. There, it's impossible. Like you, they sell 3D printed like shoes you could put on it and uh, like extend the base out and then open the thing and then have like an offset screw. Like, do you want a, a $20 battery and a $30 custom printed thing to plug this in and make it use, work as a webcam? I don't think it's worth the effort. It's just not designed to do that. Now the Sony A7S III, beautiful footage. Supposedly you can get it to, I also couldn't get it to, to go. I had to, um, I can only record in 720p as well. Again, with the cam link, uh, you can record off the HDMI stream and that's possible. But these cameras are just not meant to be used as webcams. They're just not there. Uh, the workflow is not there and they cost way too much, in my opinion, to just leave up here mounted. Uh, you have to like toggle all the settings to like work as a webcam, things that you'd wanna use, like uh, being able to control as a smartphone. Like I have my iPad here, like lets me see <laughs> what you see so I can make sure I'm like in frame. And when you have to turn that off, go through all the settings and like switch it over. So like, I don't want to do that. I wanted a camera and that I could just leave. And so I'm going with the Insta360 link because for the price, for the features, for how well it works and how I, you know, I just, I like their software. It's a great little user interface. Everything works great. The gestures were working better than all the other ones. So for me, that's all I needed. I just wanted something reliable. And uh, if you want to see me go through the effort and do cam link HDMI recording and break down some of these models, uh, that's totally fine. Uh, just leave, leave uh, some comments below, subscribe and stuff. Like, let me know that you really want that because these videos take a lot of time to make. I'm willing to make them if people could use them. I know for me, I don't need that information anymore. I needed it to pick a webcam. So this was a way for me to go through and do the work. Um, I don't plan on using a DSLR as a webcam because you cannot beat recording to the SD card. You can't, like you're gonna drop frames as a webcam. The experience is worse. So I have a phenomenal DSLR right here. It does a great job. I record to an SD card and I just pop it out, pop it in my computer and then Final Cut Pro auto matches the audio with my webcam and my screencast. If I have multiple things going at once, it takes like two seconds. Yeah, it's one extra step but it is way less pain than the pain it takes to make it uh, run as a webcam. So for me, and for those reasons, I'm out. Insta360 link for me. Maybe you find a better deal on the Osbot. Osbot will probably be number two. iPhone, if you don't, if you already have one and you don't have the money to buy one, iPhone is great. It's just annoying. You just have to deal with the annoying parts of like, oh God, there's my phone. I have to unplug it, take it off the thing, answer the call, blah, blah, blah. Hook it back up, make sure the angles, is, oh, the angle's different. I have to refilm everything, right? So um, that's where I'm at. Hope you like this video. Uh, let me know in the, the comments if you want me to do anything more like this in the future. And if not, this is a wonder and I'm out. Bye.